To make our Mediterranean baked fish, we're waiting on one thing. Mate, and here got it comes. one. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, nice little kingy. Who'd have thought they'd come this far upstream? Oh, hang on. It's got a bit of Oi, paper. Hey. <laughs> bit of paper stuck to it. <laughs> How many times have you done that? <laughs> <laughs> Rightio, yeah, well you caught it, so you've got to fill it. All right, mate, no worries. I'll show there is you. a bit of an art to filleting, isn't there? There is, yeah, and I do it the wrong way, but I'll show you how I do it. You know, that's the way my old man does it, from the tail. Okay, yeah, well, I've always done it from the tail. You're really supposed to do it from the head, yeah. but it's what I'm familiar with. And the big thing is just to keep that knife angled down the whole time so that it stays on the backbone, but you don't want to cut through the backbone. And of course, keep your fingers out of the way. <laughs> And we want to lose as little flesh as possible. This is actually a farmed kingfish, which is why you're allowed to have such a, a small one. Mm. And then we'll just cut through there. We won't worry about the rib cage area, which has got a few bones and that in it. We could make a nice fish stock out of that if you wanted to. I'll tell there you, you what, you've made that look a lot simpler than I do <laughs> when I go from the head. So I might start practicing the tail method. Yeah, it works for me. Well, so my, my dad's always done it that way, but yeah, every right. time I've had someone show me, they've always gone from the head, but this seems yep. a lot easier. Yeah. Is it, is there a different way to fillet a different fish? Oh yeah, look, they all vary. Like flathead, for example, I'd approach it entirely differently. Yep. Um, some are easy, some are hard. You know, kingfish are, are a relatively easy fish to fillet. So king are a good one if you're getting started and you want to practice some, some filleting. King is a pretty good one, isn't it? And a small one like this doesn't have a big heavy bone structure, so it's not hard to get through. But look, there's not much left on there, but at home I'd boil that up and make a stock. Yeah, we do the same <laughs> in the restaurant. Anything we get left over goes into a pot and you make a stock out of it, no waste. All right, mate, I'll get that out of your way. There's your fillets. Work your magic. Beautiful. So those couple of beautiful fillets that Starlo left us with, I've just trimmed them down. You could put both in there and you almost make a sandwich, so put your stuffings in between and truss it and mm. then wrap it. But this way you want something that's going to cover about the same size as the pan that we're going on. Okay. So I've trimmed it up so that we've got a bit of option about how we arrange them. Mm. And then some olives in there. Yum. So I'm going for Mediterranean flavours. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing unpapillot or cooking in a, in a bag like we are now, you can really do anything you want. I reckon Mediterranean flavours with kingfish is absolutely beautiful. It's so, a lovely clean flesh, isn't it? It is. Kingfish. It's my favourite fish in the world. So you were talking about the, the farmed ones. Mm. Where would they have come from? It's probably a South Australian fish. They have uh, cage uh, farming down there and they actually grow them in cages floating in the sea and it's a great product. It is. I mean, for, for something that is at the moment so on trend like kingfish, to be able to then farm and not take from our natural stocks in the ocean. I think aquaculture is a big part of the future of fisheries management because it does take that pressure off the wild stocks. Yeah. And it's a pretty, as you said, it's a really good product, so you're not really losing anything. No. Look no. at what Tasmania's been able to do with salmon. So if they can recreate that, mm. we're on a winner. So then I just put in some fennel, some cherry tomatoes, a few chives, a little squeeze of lemon. Do you have a favourite fish, Salo? Do we? Oh, fish? look, I do. I really like the West Australian dewfish, the, the, oh, yeah. the DHU yep. dewfish that they get over there. They are just superb. And their East Coast relative, the, the pearl perch, is very nice too. But down in your neck of the woods, the, um, the stripy trumpeter, a bit oh, hard to beat. My favourite <laughs> fish in the entire world. They are so, but they, no one goes out to catch them specifically. No. So you get them every now and then. That's right. You can't rely on it, which is one of the things that really annoys me about the stripy. Yeah. All right, a little bit of salt on top. And the good thing with this is it creates a little stew in the bag. So once you open yeah. it up, you just eat it completely out of the bag. Okay. So you've almost got this Mediterranean stew with the fish in there as well. No, I think the, the thing with fish though, a lot of people I think overcook fish. Yep. It, it, so will you deliberately take this off when it's still a little bit underdone? Yep. So we've got a really gentle heat on the pig. Mm. So we're going to protect a little bit of the diffuser under there. About eight minutes to ten minutes is all you're going to need. And take it off when you 80% of the way there. The residual heat in the bag is going to take care of it for you. Absolutely. A little bit of oil. A lot of people are scared of cooking fish for that exact reason. Yep. They're worried about overcooking it. It turns to cardboard. Kingfish is a little bit forgiving in that way. It is. But something like a snapper, if you overcook a snapper, Dry. it is horrible. Okay. And then you just get another same setup with your foil and your baking paper mm -hmm. and just go around and crimp the edges. Okay. And you're trying to create the same size circle as we've got on our barbecue plate. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Oh, when you've got good produce, <laughs> yeah. simplicity is all you need to and do. And with fish especially, you don't need to overcomplicate it. Nah. 
I mean, if you've got a, a kingfish that you pulled out of the Yarra River. Yeah, that's right. One ring the newspaper <laughs> and tell them about it. <laughs> okay, that just goes on there. And as I said, we've got about eight minutes and then we can open it up. Simple. Starla, that's been about eight minutes. So we'll get that off and like you said, it's probably 80 to 90% of the way there. And we'll just let it sit there and rest through for another couple of minutes. Now, we left the skin on to protect it from that heat coming from the bottom. Mm -hmm. but we made sure we took, take all the scales off. Yes. So it's not like cooking in a hot pan. If you're cooking in a hot pan, you actually want to leave the scales on because mm -hmm. they melt and they become that glass that gives you a really crispy skin. Right. So if you're cooking it directly on the barbecue grill, you can leave the scales on. But if not, take the scales off. Hmm. Good to know. All right, the big reveal. Yes. So hopefully there'll be a nice little sort of sauce stew in there on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Mmm, smells good. A so last little squeeze of fresh lemon on there. And a last little pinch of salt. Oh, lovely. Some more fresh chives. And that's it. Oh, smell that. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to be pretty happy about <laughs> eating it. <laughs>